Hi everyone, um, we're just going to wait a few more minutes um, for anyone who's kind of not been able to get on straight at 11 o'clock. Um, so we'll wait until about five past and then we'll start the webinar. Thank you. Right, brilliant. Let's get started then. So I'm just going to show my screen. So this is a news webinar um, and what we're going to be covering today is importing your audience via a CSV, using our quick campaign and, um, to create a campaign, our gate to create a drag and drop editor to create an email, and then sending out and looking back on the results. So what I will not be covering today is if you are integrated with a CRM, so with the CRM side of things, you kind of create your campaign and your audience in your CRM and you bring it across to Gator and that all gets written back. So I won't be covering that today, but if you do want to have kind of a one-on-one -on -one session going over the particular CRM that you have, if you want um, us to show you how to bring everything across and how it writes back, that's absolutely fine. If you contact your account manager, they'll be able to book you in with a one-on-one -on -one session with a product specialist to do so. So first of all, I'm just going to show you single sign-on. So it, no matter if you've just got Gator Mail, if you've also got Gator Leads, Gator Workflow, this is how you access all of those products. So to access Gator Mail is the green, um, and you can either click on the top to access it here, or you can click through via the arrows. So first of all, what I'm going to go through is importing an audience. Um, so what we've got here is a CSV example and basically with the CSV every column heading will be your contact field in Communicator so things like first name last name email you can also personalize it up a bit maybe kind of um, contract renewal date or account manager anything like that and to add those extra fields you just add those additional fields in Communicator so once you're happy with your CSV, with your column headings as your um, contact field and your data, you can then go to import. So before I go through importing the actual CSV, if you did want to put, add some personal um, contact fields, such as renewal date or account manager, if you go into audience and contact fields, you can add them here. You don't just have to have it as text, you can have it kind of as a true false value or a drop down if you if you do have it kind of that in that set that way. 
but I'm just going to have it as text for this one. But that will basically allow you to then pull through that information from your CSV into Communicator's database. So to import your CSV, you go into Audience and Import CSV and you click on to import new. All of the previous ones that you've uploaded will also be stored here as well. So if I click on to import new and enter in a name, I can then just click on to add. So what this will do is it will refresh the page and it will take me into where I can click on select and it will take me to my desktop documents or my documents, anything like that, um, and I can then select the relevant CSV. I then just click on to upload file, and what this will do is it will refresh the page and take me through to where I can map up my um, column heading fields with the system contact fields. So as you can see here, these ones have already automatically set up together, and this is because the, the column in the CSV is named exactly the same as the contact field and communicator itself. If not, you can just click on the drop down and you can select it here. You don't have to bring through all of the information as well. So say if you've got a CSV with a load of additional information and you're not actually interested in half of it being in Communicator, you can just keep that as ignore and it won't write that, that information through. If you are uploading a lot of data and you think that, right, I'm going to be using the same fields and the same contact fields for all of my uploads, you can save these as mapping, as a mapping. And then what that will do is next time you go to upload, you can select that mapping template and it will do the mapping for you. So that's just a bit of an additional work kind of taken off afterwards. So you've got three ways that you can import data. You've got a select a pre-existing group where it will take you to all of the previous groups that you've got in Communicator, and then what you can do is you can um, import it into um, a pre-existing group uh, for a refresh list, for example. If you click on Show Advanced Options, you can do a direct import. So what a direct import is, is it won't add it into a group or anything, it will just add your data into Communicator, and it will be stored under Audience and Contacts. Or if you're creating a brand new campaign and you just want a brand new group, you can just create a brand new one here. By clicking on create, that will create the group for me. And then I literally just need to click on to process and that will import my data. Again, if you are integrated with the CRM, it's done in your CRM side of things and we can cover that on a separate session. So I refresh the page, it will come up with 100% completed, how many rows I've done. Um, so you've got inserts or updates. So inserts means how many new contacts have been inserted into the Communicator database. And updates just means um, they were already in your Communicator database, but we've updated them into this new group. So we don't create duplicates or anything like that, we just update that data into a new group. If you then go under Audience and Groups, this is where all of your groups are stored and I can select the group here and just go in and count it, make sure that all of the, the, the correct number that I was expecting is in the group. So if I click to update, we've got a total count here. And um, if I click to refresh, you can see that we've got um, the right, the relevant amount of contacts in there. So once I'm happy, happy with the imported data, if I go into the campaign section and campaigns, this is where I create my quick campaign and start going through the process of creating a mailing to send out to, to this group. So the way quick campaign works is you don't have to kind of jump from tab to tab, it will just take you down a journey. So it will refresh the page and take you to the relevant place that you, you need in the stage of the campaign you're at. So if you click on to add a new campaign and select quick campaign, you can enter in a name. If you have created a previous quick campaign and you want to kind of copy everything over, you just need to change the group or maybe the subject line, you can select here and it will allow you to copy a previous campaign that you've created. 
So if I then click on create new, what this will do is it will refresh the page for me and it will take me into my setup. So the way Quick Campaign works, as I said, as you can see, you've got your different stages of your journey here and it will take you to the relevant, page, um, relevant places in Communicator for that. So first of all, on the left-hand side, we've got the campaign details. So the, you've got the campaign name here, which is just, you know, standard that's internally for yourselves. And then you've got your subject line. So with the subject line, that's what the recipient's going to see when they receive the email. Um, we do have an option to add in some personalization as well. So if we drop down on this custom field, you can pull through their first name, for example, or their company name. If you click on this URL here, we also actually have kind of a 10 top tips to consider when you're um, thinking up of the subject line um, just through here. And you can read through those and that might help you with what you're going to put. Your unsubscribe is attached via your campaign and then you insert a link in your email. So when I next, when I go to the next step of the email, I'll show you how to insert the link. But here you've got your unsubscribe actual pages. So what you've got is um, everyone will be standard, have a default unsubscribe, but you guys obviously may have preference centers or different unsubscribes or different logos, et cetera, um, for different sectors in your business if you do have it that way. And you can click on the drop down and just select which one you'd like to use. So on the right hand side, we've got our sender settings. So we've got two action types that you can send out with Communicator. You've got a one off static campaign, that's it. It goes to one audience on one day, done. You've got a refresh non recurring campaign as well. So this is literally a refresh list. So earlier when I imported the audience, we did have an option to add it to an existing group. That would be, for example, for this refresh on recurring campaign. So you send out your campaign today, for example, to your audience, but two weeks later, you add new data to that audience group and that new data gets sent out the campaign as well if it's set as refresh on recurring. So that's also really useful for things such as newsletter signups. If you have forms on your website, you kind of want to trigger off an email to go to them when they sign up saying, thank you for signing up. Our communications will be on your way shortly. Anything like that, really. So we've got the sender alias and the sender alias is a friendly alias that um, the recipient's gonna see instead of just seeing the sending domain. So we have Amy Johnson's is one that we use uh, quite a lot. So you can use um, your name, you could use marketing information, um, for example, communicator communications or communicator resources, anything like that. It's just gonna allow them to see not just an email address. Then you've got your sender email address. So what the sender email address is, is you'll have, you can have anything in front of it that you'd like. So no reply, amy.johnson, um, marketing information, anything like that. And then what you've got here is you've got your sender, sending domain. So everyone will be set up with one sending domain, which will be uh, the company name.ctml2 or sort of gtml1.co.uk, anything like that. But if I click on the drop down here, you can see that we've got quite a few custom domains. So if you would like to have a custom domain set up, for example, email.communicator.co.uk or anything like that, if you contact your account manager, they can take you through the right process to get those added. So what we've got in the case of domains is we have it um, different custom domains for different um, communications, um, different sends, because this is good since um, we're not sending out from the same one all the time. So here we've got Gator resources, we've got Gator updates or Gator events for the events that we host. So um, it's always good to kind of have a couple because then there's less of a risk of kind of send, um, less of risk of getting your domain blacklisted. And then you've got your reply to, so this again can be anything you want. We have it as a monitored inbox in case whoever sent out the email is away, anything like that, we've constantly got people monitoring it and checking the replies. Um, if you do need it to go specifically to yourself or someone else, then yes, by all means, put, put their own email address in there as well. So that's anything that you would like to be put in there. So those are the campaign details and the sender settings. So now what I'm going to do is if I click on to select email, um, your go to me go to webinar may be covering this. So um, if if it is, you've also can just click on the add email section here. So there's a button in the top right hand corner. But if you click onto the text up at the top, that will also move you to the next stage. So 
So what I'm going to do now is I want to add a new email. If you have created your email previously and you want to just attach it to a campaign, you can click on copy existing and that will bring up all of the emails that you've previously created in your communicator. However, I'm going to kind of do it setting up from scratch. So I'm just going to click on to add new email. And what that will do is it will refresh the page for me and take me into our Gator Creator Editor. So again, I'm not having to jump from tab to tab, it's just taking me through that journey. So first of all, with Gator Creator, you've got the option to, so you need to select the template you want to use. So we provide you with style templates, which is just um, templates we've built over different for different industries. And if you click onto the last button here, we've also got an Outlook template. So if you are sending out mailings, which are more of an Outlook style base, you can use that template there, add in your company logo and your details. We've got our basic templates, which are just grayed out templates, which obviously, again, you can change to your brand guidelines in the actual editor with uh, your color codes. And then we've got custom templates. So custom templates is anything that we've either created for you and uploaded or you created yourself. So one of the great things about Gator Creator is if you create an email and you want to use it again and again and again, just change the content up you can save it as a template and then that will be stored in your custom templates um, forever so you can just keep using it um, over and over again and then we also do have it there'll be a seasonal template section during you know Christmas Easter um, Halloween everything like that we do provide some seasonal templates if you ever wanted to send out you know Christmas e-card or anything like that so I'm just going to select one here and what it does is it now takes me into the editor. So what you have is you've got a live preview on the um, right hand side and the left is kind of what you're doing to it. So adding in the blocks, adding in the content, etc. So the first section you've got is, yes, I'd like to run the setup wizard. So if I click through to this, what this allows me to do is set up my primary colors, my primary fonts, anything like that. So if I click onto this little circle, I can either add in a hex code or add in an RGB code. For now, I'm just going to select uh, Gator Green. So if I click on Select, you can now see that that just changed the primary sections of uh, my email to that color. If I continue to step two, what I can do is I can change the page background, my content background, and my text color. Um, you've also got the link color here. And because I want to use the same color that I've previously used, if I click onto this clock, it has stored it for me. And I can underline my links again if I'd like to. So what I've got here is that I've set up my primary colors and my fonts. And we do provide you with all the web safe fonts here, which you can select. And I click on to finish wizard. So now what I can do is start dragging and drop, dropping in my blocks and adding in my content and my images. So for example, to add in this, um, this block here, that would have been my caption and image. So I would have just clicked and dragged it in. If I select the block itself, each block will have a content tab, which is where you can add your um, text, your images, or your links. And each block will also have a block style tab. And this is where you can change the alignment. Um, you can also change kind of um, what's taking up the most of the block. And you can change the background color and the border. You can also add padding here. And what padding is, is the spacing of between each of the sections in your email. So if I go to the content block here, I've selected my text content block. So what I can do is start adding in my text. If I wanted to add in some personalization, I can click down on merge fields here, and then I can add um, in any of those contact fields that you've updated with your contact um, information. So what you can do is if you did want to add in a link, you can highlight the text you want to use and use this button here. So that inserts a mail, um, uh, either a hyperlink or a mail to link if you want them to click through to sending an email. So if I add in a link address here, what I can do to check that it's the correct address and I've inputted it um, and it's working, if you click on this little arrow, it will actually take you to the URL that you've inputted just to make sure that it's the right one. If I click on to insert, 
that then changes it for me. If I do want to change the color, all I need to do again is just highlight and click down on the text um, color palette here. If you click through to custom, it will take you through to that same kind of um, color, color editor, where again, I can just click on my clock and change it. If you wanted to add anything in, such as um, a, a view and browser link, that will just be this button here. And you've also got your unsubscribe link. And so the unsubscribe pages are attached to your campaign, but you do need to insert that link um, into your email itself. We also have this little smiley face here. So what the smiley face does is it allows you to insert your confirm opt-in link, which will allow your recipients to confirm double opt into your mailings. Um, and it will, what we do is we capture when they opted in, their IP address, what browser, et cetera. So again, that's all um, kind of going in for them to confirm opt-in. So it helps with the GDPR. If I wanted to now change my image, I just click into the image and you can see that's now changed the content of what I'm going to upload. So if I click on to select image, it will take you to your images folder within your communicator, but you can also click on upload and that will take you to your um, desktop. If you want to add a URL for the image, you can just input it here. And then what you can do is if you would like to edit it, maybe to make it smaller, anything like that, you can click on to edit and you have the option to resize or crop. So then it's literally just a case of dragging and dropping in what you'd like to use. And then you can obviously just go around about creating your email. So if I wanted to add in, for example, a text, I can just click and drag that in. With the text block, if you go into the block style, you can actually change it to up to four columns if you'd like, um, or you can just have it two or one. If you ever want to remove a block, you can just click on the delete button and that will kind of ask you if you're sure you want to delete it and then you can remove that block. Um, you can also duplicate blocks as well by clicking on this button here and you can move them by grabbing this button here. So again, if you wanted to have kind of these two images next to each other, what you would do is just kind of click and drag image. It will allow, it will kind of allow you to have one. But if you select it and go on to block style, you can have it up to two, three or four. So completely up to you what you'd like to use. So I just want to cover the button as well. So if I go back onto the return to blocks, I can either click and drag navigation, or if you click and drag text and button, you get that option there as well. So if you select the button and go on, you can input the URL that you want to use, and you can also change the text. If you want to input URL, you can, or you can actually insert a landing zone link, uh, you can insert an unsubscribe link, anything like that. So it doesn't just have to be a URL to your website. If you then go on to block style, what you can do is scroll down to the bottom here and you've got the selected button elements. So you can change the alignment. If you do not want it to display, you just want that text, you can click hide, or you can hide it on a mobile as well. Here's where you can change the background color. And if you scroll down, you actually have the option to round your corners to make it look more like a call to action button than just a text in a, in a table. And again, you've got the option here to add some more padding in. So if that's the formatting you want to use for all the buttons within your email, if you click on apply all, as you can see, that's now changed all of the buttons in my email. So instead of having to keep going in and in and changing every time, you've got that option there. And the one last block I'd just like to cover with everyone before we move on is the social media block. So if you click and drag social share, it will appear like this. And then what you can do is you can click onto the icons and go on the content tab, and you've got the option to add in your social network URLs. What you can also do is say you don't have Pinterest, for example, you can just delete them. If I wanted to add a little bit more spacing, again, I just click on the icon and go on block style, scroll down, and I can add my padding there. 
if I then apply to all, it will apply it to both of them and space that out for me. So you have got that option there as well. So that's kind of how you use Gator Creator. Um, what I will do is after today's call, I am actually just going to send over a couple kind of follow up videos. So there's more kind of um, it goes into more depth of Gator Creator. But again, if you do, you guys do want a one on one after today, if you just contact your account manager, it's more than possible to get um, booked in. So after you've created your um, email, just to double check, what we would need to do is you've got the text version. So what the text version of an email is, is it will send through to the recipients with higher spam, spam walls and um, security on their servers, um, and it will just display text, no images, nothing like that. So if you click on to copy HTML, we copy over the text and the links for you, but not any of the code. So it should hopefully get through their spam filters. A um, very small percentage of people will receive this, but it's always good to have it created because if you do have someone receiving a blank email from you guys, they will then mark you as junk and that can obviously damage your um, reputation. Once you're happy, if you click onto live preview, we show you how it's going to display on a desktop, on an inbox. We also have it on a mobile, so all Gator Creator templates um, are responsive, so you don't need to worry about that either. And we've got tablets and then both of them next to each other. So you can either save and exit and that will take you back into the quick campaign or if you do want to save it as a template to use again in the future, if you click on the drop down and save as template, that will prompt you to add in a name and then it will be stored under the custom template section in the first part of creating the email. So I'm just going to click on save and exit and what that's going to do is that will take me back to my quick campaign where I can then continue setting up. If you do ever want to go back um, and preview here, you've also got the option to edit or you can just change the email and that will create a new one for you. If I then click on to testing, what this will allow me to do is you put in your email address and click on to send test. What that will do is it will send a manual test to your inbox um, where you can check all the URLs are working and that's displaying the way you want it to. If you go into the inbox checker tab, what we, the inbox checker is, is we send your email to various mail systems and spam check providers, and we write back how it's going to look. So things like Gmail, Outlook, AOL, Android, all of that. So instead of having to send a manual test to all of those clients, you can just kind of see it, a, a view of it from the inbox checker. If I then go on to audience, this is where I can attach the audience that I've previously uploaded. If you are integrated with a CRM, the audience will already automatically be attached as you brought it across as the first step. Um, but if you are importing it via CSV, you click on to select. And then you can grab the, the, the group that you've imported and then click on to count. So what we do is with the count, we have the audience amount from the group. We remove anyone that's unsubscribed. We remove any undeliverables and any duplicate email addresses. And then you've got your final audience and that's the amount people are sending to. So the way that we kind of deal with undeliverables is you've got your soft bounces and your hard bounces. So soft bounces, things such as the mailbox is too full or a spam notification, we attempt to send to them up to five times. So the contact may not, they may bounce from this campaign, but we may attempt to send to the next campaign and ongoing until the bounce count hits five. Once their bounce count hits five, we turn them into an undeliverable and we will remove them and just not attempt to send to them anymore. Hard bounces, such as things like you're sending to an email address and the recipient has you know, left the company and the domain, the email doesn't exist anymore, we automatically put those through as an undeliverable um, and we won't attempt to send to them again. So once you've counted your audience um, and you're happy with everything, you do also have the option to kind of export as well. So say if you had quite a few undeliverables in this audience and you wanted to see who they were, um, it would actually display kind of like a URL like the below ones here and it will export it to an Excel spreadsheet for you. So once you're happy with that, if you click on to schedule, what you can do is you can set your start date and your end date. So if you don't, you want to initiate it today, but you don't want it going out until Friday at nine o'clock, Block, for example, you can change that. So it will send pend uh, until that date hits. And then you've got the end date. So if you're sending a static campaign, which is a one off, end date, we default it to a month. This is just when the campaign will stop sending. So if it's a one off campaign, it doesn't really matter kind of when the end date is. 
However, if you're sending a refresh non recurring campaign with that refresh list, you just want to make sure it's far into the future so you have no risk of adding new data and the new data not receiving the campaign. And then once you're happy with that, if you click on to send, what we do is we take you through a check screen. So we give you kind of all your details and we give you a tick if everything's absolutely perfect. And then what we have is an orange warning if you haven't done something. So I didn't actually run an inbox checker and we obviously recommend that you do before you send it out. But again, if you don't want to, that's fine. You can still send. Once you're happy with that, if you click on to initiate campaign, that will then start sending it out for you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the results, um, kind of how the results right back into Communicator. Um, after that, what um, if you guys, there is a question box. So if you guys want to start, if you have any questions and want to start typing them into the questions box, I will answer those at the end. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just go through the view results section. So if you are integrated with your CRM, again, this will all write back into your CRM under Communicator Interactions. Um, but I'm just going to show the Communicator results screen today. So once your campaign's sent out, you'll get a view results um, next to the campaign name itself. So if I click on to view results, what we have here is you've got sent, delivered, opens and clicks, so just an overall number. If you click on show results, what we do is we break it down to unique opens and we do actually tell you which of them were on a mobile. Um, because with the um, mobile apps nowadays, if they're, someone's on another email on their mobile app, um, and your one comes through when they're on it, it's automatically an open. So things like when you're doing follow-ups or anything like that, or sending out another email or kind of looking at how the campaign's done, I would always look at the click rate instead of the opens. We show you bounced as well and not opened. So if we click on to export options, what you can do here is you can export all of these into an Excel spreadsheet. So with the bounces, we do provide the bounce reason and on our help site, we have a bounce reason article and what this does is it will show you the bounce reasons we've given in that excel spreadsheet and it will explain if they're a hard or soft bounce and exactly what they mean so for example bad mailbox means it's invalid or non-existent this is a hard bounce but then you've got spam related which just it's refused for spam reasons and that is a soft bounce a complaint means the recipient has received your email address, your email, and they've marked it as spam. So they're complaining about the email. I always think that's a good one to export because we don't automatically unsubscribe them from that, obviously, because they've not actually clicked on the unsubscribe link. So it's always good to export that maybe and then create it as an exclude group. So you're not continuously sending to someone who doesn't want the email. If you scroll down here, what we've got is just an overview of the opens and clicks and a browser breakdown overview. If I click onto the creative tab, what it does is it will show you your creative on the left hand side and it will highlight in red the top clicks, um, in kind of green, yellow, the warmer clicks and blue, the cold clicks. So instead of having to go back into your email and check exactly what you've sent, you've just got a view here on, under the creative tab. We've got a clicks tab here as well. So what it will do is it will show you the URL that you've got. It will tell you the total and distinct um, and the total being how many clicks, distinct being how many people clicked on the link. And if you click on the drop down here, it will show you exactly who's clicked. I'm obviously not going to do that for um, data security reasons, but you can um, just click down and it will show you exactly who's clicked. Um, if you click on export distinct web clicks as well, that will export it to an Excel spreadsheet for you. And then we have click rates. And I know this is completely dependent on the day and times you're sending out your campaigns, but we show you the day that it got the most clicks and the, um, the hour as well. So again, that can, if that helps you with kind of um, sending what times to send out, then that's great. But again, it, it is completely dependent on when you're sending out your emails and who to. If I click onto the results URL, say if someone has um, helped you out with the content or maybe they're running an event that you've based the email on, but they don't have a login, what you can do is you can create a results URL and select exactly what they would like to see um, and then enter in a URL and that will generate a, um, generate a URL, enter in a password and that will generate a URL for them to be sent so they can see just this campaign's results. 
the only thing they won't see is um, the actual email addresses they'll just kind of see overall results because of data security reasons So those are the results of the campaign. Um, again, if you are integrated with your CRM, they do all right back under communicator integrations. Um, and what, what I'm not actually covering today, which um, would, I think if you contact your account manager, again, would be good to have a one-on-one -on -one session with, is we've got a reporting tab. So um, the main report section of the reporting tab, um, I'd say is a good, good one to cover, is the activity reports. So what we can do here is you can compare campaign results. You can just kind of look over your overall activity based on a time and, and date, so three months or two weeks or seven days, anything like that. So if you um, contact your account manager, we can book, book in a one-on-one -on -one session for the reporting. Again, I think it's better to do reporting one-on-one -on -one because it's very bespoke on what you want to kind of report on. So that's everything I've got to show you today. What, what we haven't covered is um, a CRM integration, if you have it, um, landing zones, um, web forms, and the reporting tab. So if you do want to cover any of those, again, if you contact um, the account manager at Communicator, then we can book those in. So I've got a couple of questions here. What does the inbox checker do? So the inbox checker will send your email um, over to various email clients based um, from, from our third party provider and it will write back exactly how it looks. So if I can just find one quickly here. So we'll display it in little screenshots for you and then you can click in and look over exactly what they've, um, how they display. So I try. So if I click into this inbox checker here, What you've got is all of the um, email clients that we can provide and if I and it's just kind of bringing you through the results again but then you can click through and see exactly how they're going to look how, how it's going to look on each one um, you've also got the spam filter score so it'll tell you if it's passed um, all of the spam filters and if they failed it will tell you the reason why um, so if I go back onto the email screenshots they're taking a little while to load um, but what it does is you can actually click into each one and then it will move you through to each um, client and how it's going to display on all of them. So can a user be in multiple groups and can you have subgroups? So you, oh, you can have one contact in multiple groups, yes, that's absolutely fine, just as long as you um, when you're in, so basically what it does is when it imports, it will update the user instead of kind of create another one. So it'll update it and put them in a new group, um, but then it will also kind of keep them in any previous groups that they've been in before. Um, you can have so you can have included groups, yes, if that what you, if that's what you mean by subgroups. So if you go into audience and um, groups, if you import two CSV files and create two new groups, what you can do here is if you go into your uh, your master group, for example. you can then include a subgroup by clicking select and select the other group that you've imported and that will be your subgroup and then it will if you click the count that will update with both um, both groups numbers you can actually also exclude a group as well so if you wanted to import a, load, uh, a couple of uh, you know 10 or 15 contacts you don't want to send a particular campaign to you can add them as an exclude group and that will take them away from the group so they don't send that particular campaign so yes, essentially you can have include and exclude groups. If you go onto our help site as well um, if, and type in uh, group rules, you can also have a group based on rules and then create these sub subgroups as well. So if you go onto the Communicator homepage and go into audience, uh, we do actually have how exactly you would create those subgroups and put them in your master list.
So I think that appears to be all the questions um, for today. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to finish off now today. So I hope this was um, you, uh, this was useful for all of you. Um, again, if anyone want to cover anything over once uh, once more, just either email support desk or your account manager, and we can sort that out. Um, I will be send, um, sending you a kind of a follow up email either um, either kind of end of today or tomorrow, and that does have videos covering everything that we have covered today. Um, so I um, thank you all for um, listening listening in, and if you do need anything, just let our support desk know, and we can we can put you over to the relevant contact. So thank you very much, and have a good rest of your day.